Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to be talking about the three worst foods to eat if you have a vertigo, dizziness, or balance problem. So if you have something like BPPV, or Meniere's disease, or vertigo, or dizziness that no one seems to know what's causing it, I think you're going to like this video. All right, so I based this list off of two things. Number one, my 20 plus years of experience dealing with these kinds of cases. And number two, uh, what the research literature shows. So without any further ado, let's kind of get into the list. So number one, the worst food you can eat if you have a vertigo, dizziness, or balance problem is gluten. Now, if I say gluten, what I'm really saying is wheat, right? Now, to be technically technical, uh, gluten is sort of a, a catch-all term, but there's things, there's certain fractions of wheat, like gliadin and alpha-gliadin, and uh, there's wheat germagglutinin, but basically what it boils down to is wheat is a problem. Why is it a problem? Well, there's three big reasons. Number one is uh, wheat or gluten is generally a problem when someone has an autoimmune condition. I mean, I use gluten-free diets all the time. Now, how does autoimmunity relate to having a vertigo, dizziness, or balance problem? Well, uh, in the inner ear, uh, you can have inflammation in your inner ear. Uh, you can have an autoimmune attack on your inner ear, but that's not that common. What's more common, at least what I've seen in my 20 years, is that someone will have an autoimmune problem, and those are inflammatory. And one of the kind of collateral damage side effects of that is the inflammation goes a lot of different places. And that inflammation, those cytokines and chemokines, can disturb what's going on in your inner ear and make you have dizziness or vertigo or imbalance. And gluten is pretty much the worst food you can eat if you have an autoimmune problem, uh, pretty much bar none. So that's reason number one. Number two reason gluten's a problem for uh, vertigo, dizziness, and balance problems is just general inflammation, uh, whether you're autoimmune or not. Uh, research has shown that when you eat wheat, it temporarily causes a hyperleaky gut. And without going too much into that, what that means is it's going to promote inflammation. And most people feel better just in general, whether they're sick or or have any type of vertigo problem uh, if they go gluten-free. Now, I'm not telling you you should go gluten-free. I'm just trying to explain uh, what, the, what the reasoning is. So first reason why gluten's a problem is autoimmunity in general and kind of fanning the flames of that. Second is non-autoimmune inflammation and fanning the flames of that, because remember, the inflammation goes everywhere. And for some people, it lands in their ear and can distort, uh, not only make swelling and that kind of things happen in the inner ear, but distort the processing of signals because all neurons have what we call cytokine receptors. And cytokines, these immune system messengers, when you have a lot of them or an asymmetrical distribution of them, they can literally change how certain nerve circuits work, especially those that process information from your inner ear. Now the third reason uh, uh, gluten is a problem is it cross reacts with a lot of different things. So that brings us to number two. So we talked about cross reaction. Cross-reaction occurs when the antibodies for one thing can stick on another thing because they are molecularly similar. Uh, antibodies, just like a little post-it note that your immune system makes to stick onto something. But the problem is, uh, there can be what we call a, a molecular mimicry or epitope similarity. And all that means is, is that the antibody for one thing okay, can stick onto another thing uh, because they look very, very similar, right? Even though they're not the exact same thing. And the number one food that does that with gluten and wheat is milk. So milk or dairy products, milk products, are the number two of the three worst foods you can eat after a chronic vertigo, dizziness, or balance problem because of cross-reaction. Uh, and I know I've seen a lot of patients over the years that say, well, you know, I tried a gluten-free diet for a few weeks. Well, that's not going to do it, number one. Or they had a gluten-free diet, but they were still eating uh, milk products. And I've lost count of how many cases where we've got them to finally get rid of the milk products and whoop, that seemed to be the key, and the key is the cross-reaction. So what that means is, is you could be on a gluten-free diet, but if you're still eating milk products uh, to your immune system, it's like you're still eating gluten, or like you're eating uh, basically the same thing as gluten, and it can fan the flames of inflammation. Now, a lot of people always ask, well, what about if it's uh, organic, or what about if it's you know unpasteurized? That's not what the deal is. There are proteins in milk that are the problem. There's caseins, there's butyrophilins, and those don't matter, those don't change whether it's organic or pasteurized. And then people say, well, what about if I have yogurt? Well, there may be a little bit less of those proteins, but they're still there. Well, what about 
Uh, what about sheep or goat's milk? They all have those same proteins. Yes, goat milk and sheep milk might be a little bit easier to digest, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about an immune system reaction to the proteins inside the dairy products. Now, also, uh, when I say dairy, I don't mean eggs. I mean cow's milk, cow, sheep, goat's milk. All right, so we talked about gluten. We talked about uh, dairy products. And the third worst food you can eat if you have a chronic vertigo, dizziness, or balance problem is sugar. Now, why sugar? Well, because over the last 20 years, secondary to like having an autoimmune problem being the cause of your chronic vertigo, dizziness, and balance problem, the second most common thing I've seen be a major factor in that is insulin resistance. So insulin resistance is when uh, you have high blood sugar and you can't get it in your cells. Now, insulin resistance can happen for a lot of different reasons, and I won't go into that right now. I just want you to know that people that are eating uh, a large amount of sugar, simple sugars, uh, sugary drinks, or eating you know, sweets and candy and stuff like that, uh, those people tend to have more problems with insulin resistance. I've had many cases, I mean many cases over the years, with uh, Meniere's, for example, that had an undiagnosed or an uncontrolled type 2 diabetes, and when we got a hold of that, the Meniere symptoms went away, or it was a huge factor in getting the Meniere symptoms to go away. Why is that? Well, because high blood sugar is inflammatory. I, that's the third or fourth time I've, I've mentioned inflammation. And uh, when you have a big spike in your blood sugar because you are insulin resistant and the insulin is, uh, your body's not responding to the insulin's uh, command, which is to suck sugar into the cells, when that doesn't happen, the sugar hangs out and that's inflammatory. And plus, the spike in blood sugar that comes with that uh, brings an interleukin-6, which is a cytokine, along with it. So being insulin resistant is uh, inflammatory and really can contribute to vertigo, dizziness, and balance problems. So what that means is, if you got one of those problems and you find yourself, you know, you're drinking alcohol, which is liquid sugar, or you are eating simple carbs a lot, right? Or you're eating lots of, um, it doesn't have to be candy, but you're eating like a lot of grains that are like, you know, simple. Uh, that could be a problem, right? Because that can provoke the inflammation I was talking about. So I've mentioned all those foods, and yeah, you could probably eliminate those if you have a vertigo, dizziness, or balance problem, and, and maybe you'll get better, but that's, that's like just the diet side of things. Very often, people that have these uh, food contributors to their vertigo, dizziness, and balance problem, they got other metabolic things happening. So you're not really going to probably hit a home run just avoiding those things I've mentioned, but I did want to make the video so you could understand that there are some things you can do that are probably going to help, but ultimately, you're going to have to work with someone that can do it all, right? Work with a doctor who understands the connection between gluten and dairy and inflammation and all that kind of stuff with the vestibular system and knows what kind of tests to order to do a good job, right? To kind of step back and get the big picture and uh, kind of put the puzzle pieces together and find out what's, what's going on in a particular patient's case. So make sure you're working with someone that knows what test to order, how to interpret those tests, and then what are you going to do about it? Because believe me, uh, if you've got a gluten sensitivity, uh, getting rid of the food, getting rid of the gluten is one way to, to deal with it, but sometimes there's things that you have to do with the gut. If you have an autoimmune problem, there's a lot of things you have to do for that. You got to do, uh, you should do lymphocyte immunophenotyping, uh, but there are things you can do to regulate diabetes uh, if your doctor knows what to do. So if you got a chronic vertigo, dizziness, balance problem, I would definitely think about avoiding those foods and find a doctor that understands uh, all those other things we were just talking about. All right, I'll see you next time.